Welcome back everyone to Boomy World. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We got Savannah Peterson out on the ground in the show floor getting all the action from the partners and the players here at Boomy World who are making AI integration happen. Savannah, over to you. Thanks, John. It's so great to be here in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado, at Boomy World 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson, you're watching theCUBE, and I'm very excited for our next guest. We've actually been grooving to the music on the dance floor here at the opening night reception. Natash, CEO of Our Systems, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you, Savada. It's a pleasure to be here. It's it's a joy. I'm, I'm excited we get to share this. We get to have our dance moment here. We get it kicked did. off. It's our first Boomy World for both of us. We What's did. your first impression? Well, I'm really excited. I mean, look, yeah. this is happening after four years, right? And getting back here with such excitement, look at the energy in the room, it really gets me. Oh yeah, me me too. <laughs> so just in case folks aren't familiar with our systems, and I know you've been CEO now for nine months, so this is long enough to have this ice. Uh -huh. Give us the pitch, tell us about our systems. Well, our systems is a software product engineering company, and uh, we, work, we have worked with clients over 30 years across various industries. And what we really excel in doing is helping build softwares for them that solve their business problems or softwares that actually carries their product with them, right? Yes. And in doing that, integrating the fabric, bringing all the data silos together, helping them leverage the power of their data is what we excel at. So what we say is like, it's really over here, AI powered integration and building solutions that bring value. Now, I, uh, great job, you nailed the pitch. I can tell that you're doing good. But one of the things that I like about that is you, you talked about value. Now, value to our systems and to you, I can tell just from having spoken to you, is not just about ROI and business value, it's also about elevating and enhancing the human experience. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, uh, Savannah, for, for the longest time, I fundamentally believe that the purpose of technology is to elevate human experience, right? And, and if we talk about any technology in the past or now as we're talking about AI, Every technology has a potential to do big, big things, bring a lot of business value, but in doing so, it has always got to be human-centric. It has to solve the day-to-day -day problems that we face as employees, as customers, as suppliers, and do it in a manner that it elevates our experience so that we can use the technology to the best of its uh, potential. Absolutely. So how do you guide customers through that journey? Well, look, I mean, just take AI as an example because AI is the end thing. Everybody's talking about I don't about know what you're it. talking about. I haven't yeah. heard that acronym at all even <laughs> since I got here. <laughs> right, right. So if you take AI as an example, great potential uh, because the kind of things we can do and especially with large language models and generative AI as it has come in now, you know, the world is our oyster. Yeah. Just grounding it in real life problems, day-to-day -day problems that need to be solved keeping the view of the people who are going to be interacting with it so that their job becomes easier. We, of course, also have to reskill some of those people to use AI in the right manner, right? And then to look at it from the organization landscape where your data fabric, the data silos are not brushed under a large initiative for, let's say, ERP implementation or right. a CRM implementation. We do think, if I do ERP, all my problems are taken care of. Well, yes provided you get the data right, provided you get the integration right, and not focusing on data integrations, building that framework right in the first place can be a bigger challenge because it often is the long pull in the tent. Yeah. Right? So identifying individual value drivers behind them, identifying what the ROI for each of those pieces is going to be, and then building the whole thing together, like building a house room by room. Yeah, right? or brick by brick, even brick when you're talking brick. about those value exactly. drivers. Yeah. That's how I would suggest all customers to look at it. That's how we help our customers do it. And you know, that's how we've always taken up. In fact, you know, I'll give you an example of how Boomi and AI kind of come together, right? Please. So for one of our customers who's in industrial engineering, which basically means they make engineered products, which are usually made to order, not made to store. One of the challenges was how do we quote for the product when the order is coming in? Because it is custom engineered, right? And the challenge was to roll up the cost that data, those, uh, those individual information pieces lie in multiple systems, the siloed systems. And then there is knowledge piece on top of it to build it up together, like, like cooking a dish in your kitchen, right? I mean, the recipe on top, right? which has to come together before arrive at the price. 
Wumi provides us that platform and the ability to stitch the fabric together, bring so those powerful. data elements right, yeah. and integrate them. But then AI gives that additional layer to construct the recipe on the fly and provide that form. So, so is AI going to make us better chefs as well? Oh, I'm sure it will. <laughs> we just have to get to that stage. What's your favorite thing to cook now that we're here? Well, I mean, I love <laughs> cooking in general, but my son loves when I when I do a penne arrabbiato. Oh, yum! Yeah. Great choice. Oh man, we're all hungry. There's food all over this floor right now. Now you got me thinking about it. What does your son think about AI? Well, he thinks um, it can solve a lot of problems, but uh, we should not become slaves to it. I need to. Right? The right attitude to have. I, and, and look, I mean, uh, this younger generation, they are far more aware and they, they are circumspect about everything, yeah. which is bassy, right? Yeah. So they want to look at under the hood. And his point is, we still haven't solved the problem of bias in AI. We haven't solved the problem of responsibility in AI. The hallucination and false positives still continue. Mm -hmm. And who's administering all this? And, and he believes, and I do, that it's not the job of the government, it's not the job of a company. It is yeah. a collective responsibility of us as corporate citizens to understand how we will use it responsibly, right? And when we build our solutions, we have to bring that lens to be able to build that. Well, I agree with your son. I bet that's nice. How old is he? But he's 22. He's uh, studying engineering uh, currently. Oh, nice. And I'm always curious to see how Gen Z is feeling about AI and, and all the stuff that we talk about. So thanks for sharing that unexpected insight. Bringing it back to our original chat, can mm -hmm. you give us some more customer examples of success you had recently? Well, uh, I can think of another example um, in a food processing, a frozen foods company, uh, and they were going through a massive ERP uh, implementation and transformation. Yeah. The speed of the ERP implementation was getting restricted by obviously the same challenges, fragmented system, data silos, integration challenges. And they realized that they did not have their master data in place. Now imagine an ERP system without having master data in place. So, uh, how we help them? We use uh, the Booby Data Hub. Now it's called Data Hub, not Master Data Hub, as we learned today, right? Uh, we use the Boomi Data Hub to harmonize the master data entities. We created the EDI, uh, uh, you know, lines of connects, and and the simple iPaaS architecture, which actually helped them not only move the ERP project faster, but it also helped them retire almost 30 of their legacy systems to make the, make 30. the whole landscape. Just make sure I heard you right. 30 systems. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. That's impressive. But I mean, that's the power of what we can do when we bring things together. Connected world, as we call it. Yeah, right? well, speaking of coming together, let's talk about the partnership with Boomi. What does that mean for you? Well, it's been great. I mean, we've been partners with Boomi for uh, almost five years now. Uh, we are gold partners. Uh, we hope to be platinum soon. Hey, uh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, what we've done is we focused on a value chain and a uh, supply chain value chain to be uh, to be specific. We launched a solution a few years earlier, which is called the Media Dashboard, which is a supply chain visibility solution. Oh yeah, uh, Su which supply chain such a big situation absolutely. right now, and will continue to be for the next. And, and imagine the angst of people when they when the shipments are delayed, when the orders are not fulfilled, when they when they don't know where it went, right? Yeah, yeah. So having a single pane of glass to be able to see the status of the order, to understand which customer is ordering what or where is my shipment. So that's been a solution which has been immensely successful. We have done over 1,800 in integrations with that. And uh, during wow, this that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And during this conference, actually, day after tomorrow. We're launching the next solution, which is going to be a partner onboarding solution, which brings supply chain resilience. And you touched upon the supply chain, you know, this yeah. I have today. If you are a supply chain manager of a company, you're looking at a potential risk. It could be with the shipping lanes, it could be with the geopolitical risks. And the only way to mitigate that is I need alternate suppliers. I need to onboard them fast. Yeah. Today it takes me well, six weeks to onboard a new supplier. Sure because I've got legal contracts, I've got EDI uh, messaging queues to be set up. Oh, yeah. A whole lot of things. And there are multiple... And it's a lot of admin. It's not even, you know, that's not strategic thinking or any of that stuff. It's just a lot of manual work. Yeah, gross. Yeah. Right. And what we've done is we've again created an AI-powered solution on Booty platform, which allows this to happen in two or three days. And the biggest thing is it democratizes the process 
instead of depending on an IT team yeah. or a legal team, it's a supply chain team that can at least share it themselves, right? So that's really exciting for us. We're looking forward to the launch in two days. And it's super exciting. I'm glad we got to hear about it first. All right, taking off your our assistance half for a second, what has you most personally excited about the AI revolution? It, yeah. uh, the the whole deep fake world. Yeah. It's very exciting because there is a bad side to deep fake, which we all know. You know, right. celebrity is getting pictures that they never wanted to be out there and their feeds. But there's an exciting side of it where um, you know it's revolutionizing the advertising world, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you could today advertise with uh, normal human models uh, without having to pay the big fees for celebrities and all. Right. It's it's changing the way uh, retailers work because uh, you can try on apparel without really having to be in the store, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think you know there are uh, there are lots of uses of this. And if uh, if Meta were to really become big, uh, the whole metaverse, the whole mixed reality world, yeah. will have a huge uh, implication uh, from the AI side. It's going to be a lot of different things. Talk yeah. about hyper customization. Yeah. It could be everything. Who knows? They'll be able to predict what we're craving or what we're thinking about or everything else based on all of our habits. So it's a brave, definitely a very brave new world. Last question for you, what's next for our systems? I know you've got the big announcement this week, but, but give us a little farther out in the future. Well, our systems is, uh, you know, steadily and surely expanding into multiple industry verticals. We have been largely focused on the tech side because we come from a product engineering background. But now every single industry is turning into a tech industry. Yeah. Finance is no longer just finance, it's been tech, health tech, insure tech, and so on and so forth. So the relevance of breaking tech intensity into an enterprise has become very, very uh, big and important. And we believe that as we did earlier this year, we have verticalized ourselves. We are focusing on uh, vertical tech solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what's going to, you know, create the next wave or next uh, next orbit for our systems. And that's where we are excited to go. Well, it's a very exciting time for our systems. Also for you, congrats again on the Thank new you. job. Natash, this was just an absolutely fantastic interview. I could tell right away when we shook hands that your energy was going to bring <laughs> bring the heat and the fun for tonight's show. Well, it so, takes two to tango. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. And you thank all of you for tuning in. Wherever you might be on this beautiful earth, we're here in Denver, Colorado at Boomy World 2024. My name's Vanna Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Deep.